you uh, for the first time did some television work this year on uh, Monday Night Football how was that experience was it harder than it than it looks uh, is it something you want to continue doing yeah, so I'm gonna have the opportunity to do to do more um, in negotiations right now, um, and I really I really enjoyed it. It gave me an opportunity to talk about the game that I love, um, and be able to kind of break it down and just in the way I see it, right? Um, and it's an open book test in my opinion because you can watch as much tape and you can get as much information. You know, if you're talking about let's say in a segment, you know, Tampa versus you know the Falcons right if I want to call the players and or call one of the coaches you know to get a little bit more information you know I can do that so it's really about how much you want to put into it I really enjoyed it my first year where they put me in position to be successful you know, um, you know they gave me you know a lot of coaching um, I hired I actually hired my own coach and Jerry Madeline you know is who worked with me twice a week you know going over my podcast tapes and also the stuff that I was doing on TV so you know I feel like when I watched my tape early in the year to what I was doing later in the year it was a drastic improvement now that's all you can ask for. You've got a contact list that I've you know never seen anything like it. The number of athletes who are in it. So you you've known Tom Brady f for a while. Did you have an inkling that this was going to be it for him? Yeah, I, I had a strong inclination. Like he didn't ever came out and said Fitz, I'm 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 done. But you know when I went out to the game, you know I I had a strong feeling prior to that this was probably going to be his last run. And, you know, I hadn't been back to Cardinal Stadium, you know, to watch a game, really. Um, and, you know, I, I wanted to go and watch the game. It wasn't a great game by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, seeing them lead, a, you know, a game-winning touchdown at the end of the game. And then after, you know, came out and talked with us for about 30 minutes before he got on the team bus and talked to my kids about the importance of education and, you know, what hard work and dedication is all about. And it, it was really good for my kids to see not only is he the greatest football player of all time, but he is a, a man that's humble. Um, He's gracious with his time, cares about other people, and like those are some of the things that really resonate with me outside of all of his championships. Why why did you stay away from games for so so long for, after leaving football? Well, I think it was important to kind of give yourself that that break. You know, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of emotions that go into doing something that you've done for 35 years. I know you're going to probably write for another, you know, 25 years. But when you get finished doing that, you know, there's going to be you're going to miss it. You're going to miss the contacts, going into the locker room, having the relationships and things that you did for such a long time. And, you know, I think the natural thing is for you to kind of try to stay close to it, but it's never going to be the same if you're out of it. So I wanted to make sure I got away from it and, and I kind of recovered. You know, I would I would equate it to like losing a family member. You know, you care deeply about it. And it's never going to it's never the person's never going to come back um, and you just have to kind of mourn it. And now I can really appreciate it now. You know, when I go to the game and I can watch it with my kids and not have like any really strong feelings for it. Uh, speaking of the Cardinals, you know, they're coming off maybe the most tumultuous season. <laughs> And, and that's saying something because, you know, you've been through a few of those. But, you know, and Kyler Murray is such a lightning rod. What, what do you think has to happen? What do the Cardinals have to get from him to maybe take that next step to reverse things? You know, Kyler's proven over the last few years he's such a dynamic player. Um, he's transcending talent. You know, when he's playing at his best, it's hard to argue that there's, you know, two or three players that are better than him in the league. Like he's just that talented in terms of his throwing and his ability to run and scramble, improvise. The plays that he makes are like nothing else anybody can do. Um, but you know, you, you hear about all the issues that, that that have happened over the last couple of years as well. So I think it's very important for them to be able to hire a coach that can really like get Kyler to, to understand like for, for the team to be great you know, like there's there's natural sacrifices that great players have to make, and you know if if they can got, get a guy that Kyler respects and 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 the, and the respect is mutual, and they, and they understand that they have to work together to to get things going in the right direction. I think the, the sky's the limit, but um, you know it has to be the right personalities. You you as a young, I mean, you came in the league. You're 21 years old. Turned 21 your first training camp. So you need a tough love early. Is that what he needs? I don't. I don't know if. I mean, he's he's a lot different. A lot different than I was. You know, I I didn't really say a lot when I came in. I kept my mouth shut. I kind of stayed to myself. But, you know, I, I was I was lucky to have you know a guy like Kurt Warner come in my second year. I was really lucky to have Emmett Smith, and I spent a lot of time with those guys, and and I listened to them. I, I wanted to hear what they thought, you know, what I needed to improve on. And I, and I took it. They, they told me a lot of things I didn't like to hear when I was young. But I knew if I wanted to be like them, that those are the things that I needed to work on. And so I was willing to do that. And, you know, it's 
the problems with, with him have nothing to do with his ability or his talent. And that's most of the problem. You look around the league at the, the quarterbacks, like they don't have the ability to, to, to take their team to the next level. You know, they've reached their ceiling. Kyler doesn't have a ceiling. Like physical, he has no he has no ceiling. He can be as great as he wants to be. Um, it's just a little things, you know. Once he buys into that and really makes a, a, a consorted effort to do that and ingratiate himself to his teammates and things of that nature, then it will be it'll be special. Speaking of Arizona teams, you've you've had an interest in the Suns. Um, I got to ask you, what what'd you think of the the trade, getting KD, bringing KD to town? You know, I, I'm, I was sad initially because I, I love Mikael and Cam. They are two terrific young players um, and you know I think they they're, they're both continuing to sin you look at what Mikael was able to do over the last month you know without Devin a lot of time without Chris I mean he really was flourishing um, but you know when you get the opportunity to have a you know first battle Hall of Famer uh, Olympian uh, you know all-time greats and Kevin Durant a walking talking bucket you put him with, with book and you know a point guard point guard like uh, Chris Paul and a, and a great big man and, and DeAndre I mean we, we, we got pretty damn good real quick um, and I, you know you, you match you match the lineups up I, I don't I don't know if anybody wants that smoke hey sports fans if you want to see more conversations with athletes and stars check out these videos right here and be sure to subscribe for more from USA Today sports